you recently said that you wanted to nuke Mars. Um, yeah, so, so nuking Mars, I, 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 I sort of was a little flippant about that. Um, <laughs> I think it's a really decent idea. Thank you, thank you. Um, so yeah, the, w what I was really getting at, but it's hard to you know, convey that in like 30 seconds you know, on, on the late show with Stephen Colbert, uh, was, was that the, the sun is a, a nuclear explosion, a fusion explosion. That's what the sun is. It's an ongoing fusion explosion. So if you wanted to uh, add energy to Mars, like warm up Mars, the, really the source of almost all energy in the universe is fusion. Um, you know, e even fission is, um, originally there was fusion, and then that, that, that then later resulted in fission. But, um, fusion is like when you, when you take, uh, say, two hydrogen uh, atoms or, or, a, or two hydrogen isotopes, technically, and slam them together and form helium. That's, that's fusion. Right. And then fission is like when you've got um, like a heavy atom that is decaying at a, at a uh, you know, relatively like a noticeable rate, like uranium or plutonium, and decays into smaller um, atoms, then uh, that, that's, that's fission. But what I was really talking about is creating two little suns, uh, two pulsing suns above the north and south pole of Mars that would warm the, the poles up enough so that the frozen CO2 would, would gasify and densify the atmosphere. Some of the water would also um, heat up and, and you'd have sort of water, more water, water vapor and um, CO2 in the, in the Martian atmosphere, which in that case is good because the, the CO2 ends up warming, warming Mars up. And so you get a positive um, sort of reaction, like it's a positive cycle of, of warming on Mars. Like you want to warm Mars up, but you don't want to warm Earth up, you know, so. Well, I mean, the, the, the Mars thing is, is really, like, if you say what is going to be really important to the preservation of, uh, of, of civilization or life as we know it, more than just, you know, humanity, uh, because, of course, we bring life as we know it to Mars. Um, and th there's no life that we can detect on the surface of Mars. There may be some subterranean bacterial life, but there's no, it's, uh, on, on the surface, there, there isn't anything. Um, so this would be the extension of life to another planet, um, or life as we know it to another planet. Um, and um, I think would be, make a huge difference to the probable a lifespan of human civilization and, um, and life as we know it. So it's sort of like an insurance policy, a life insurance policy of life collectively. And, um, you know, so it's, yeah, probable. Because you, th because you think global warming, what do you, what do you think is going to no, happen no, here that's going to... I, I do want to be clear. It's, this, is, this is a... I mean, I, I think it's important that we become a multi-planet species, not a single planet species, but on another planet. Um, so this is... If, if we... It's like, really, it's like, what kind of future do you want to have? Do you want to have a future where we are forever confined to one planet or one where we are out there exploring the stars and, and on, on many planets? And I think... The, the latter one is far more exciting and inspiring because the former is basically waiting around until some, some extinction event. So, because eventually there will be one. Um, and um, it might be quite far in the future, but it also might not be far in the future. Um, so there's, so there's, the, there's really two main reasons, I think, to make life multiplanetary and to establish a self-sustaining civilization on Mars. One is the defensive reason to, to ensure that the light of consciousness as we know it is not extinguished. Uh, or, or last much longer. And the second is that it would be an, uh, an amazing adventure that, uh, that we, we could all enjoy uh, vicariously, uh, if not uh, personally. I, I think sustainable energy is the most important pr problem that we, we face this century. Um, th that's like a, a known difficult thing that we have to solve. Um, like if, if, we, if we continue to rely on burning hydrocarbons it, the, the future is going to be quite bad, and the vast majority of the scientific establishment believes that. And the evidence, I think, is, well, I mean, for, for, for anyone with a scientific uh, background is um, you know, unequivocal. So, um, so, so we've we got to solve sustainable energy. Uh, I'm a big fan of solar because we've got this big uh, fusion ball in the sky uh, called the sun, and uh, it shows up every day. So. If, if we can you know, use solar energy plus batteries, we can actually have a complete solution for sustainable energy gener generation. And then we need to use it in a sustainable way, which is uh, you know, we, we need the electric transport. It's definitely possible to make fusion work. 
Um, the, and, but I think uh, at the, and I used to be a big fan of, of like having of that as the long-term energy source. Um, but I'm inclined to think like indirect fusion uh, from, from the sun essentially is going to be the primary source, and then to some degree there will be uh, fusion reactors for you know maybe if cargo ships really, or whatever. Yeah, if you're really far north or really you, far oh, south or something. You, what like about that. the risks of, of nuclear energy? Of a fusion? A fusion? I assume there's some risk. There's no risk. Not really. Zero. I'm an idiot. I don't. Uh, no. Um, no. No. I mean, with fusion, the difficulty is keeping it going. Uh, not. Uh, you know, with, with, with fission, uh, you, you have some meltdown risk, although there's, you know, there's new technology on the fission front that makes the meltdown risk extremely low. Um, but, um, but with fusion, the great difficulty is, just, is keeping the reaction from, is keeping it, the fire from going out. It, it's quite hard to sustain a fusion reaction, uh, unless you have something very big like the sun. And where, where you have, the sun has gravitational confinement of the fusion reaction. Um, so since you, you can't do gravitational confinement on Earth, you have to do some sort of uh, electromagnetic confinement in one, one form or another, uh, or, a, or a kinetic confinement by slamming things into each other. Um, so it's, it's quite tricky to prevent a fusion explosion from not immediately extinguishing.